We've been walking around in our psyches with a, in a culture of, um, of women good, men bad. Women and, good, and, men and, bad. And, That's exactly and, correct. And that is a toxic attitude toward men. Um, and that leads to men just throwing their hands up and walking out the door. Yes. And so, Marriage is collapsing because of this. Men yes. are running away. Yes. Men are both deeply attracted to women. Men need women because the degree to which the man is a traditional man and unable to be a, a completely emotionally healthy within himself is the degree to which he will be emotionally dependent on women, just like the woman who doesn't take care of herself financially will be attracted to men who will take care of her financially and neither will get their needs, needs met. That is the tango that we must unravel. Every time a woman complains, we have, to, we have to understand that a woman and a man have evolved to be in a tango where the woman is attract the man and, and then resist until she finds out whether he's the right man completely and until she discovers how he handles no's, which is one of the reasons why women say no even when they are interested because they want to find out how a man handles no's. Because if a man handles nose badly, that gives him a signal to get out. And if the man handles nose well, that gives him a signal and permission to go to that next level. So there's a purpose for the man initiating and the, and the woman saying no for a while and backing off. And there's lots of purposes. That's just one of them. But the point there is, if we're going to change that dynamic between men and women, that entire tango needs to be changed. And when that entire tango needs to be, ta needs to be changed, we need to hear how women are hurt and hear how men are hurt. We, when I hear the fact that it's not just women that are hurt this way and men that are hurt that, that way, it is some women hurt this way and some women feel the opposite of that. And there's some men that feel this way and some men that feel the opposite of that. The women's movement has been not just a, sex, a, a sexist movement, it's been a, a, a movement that has not acknowledged conservative women uh, nearly enough. So uh, the, the feminist movement has been a movement about liberal women and the way liberal women feel. It has not been a, a movement about the way conservative women feel, about the way Christian women feel. What we need is every part of the male-female movement to be willing to represent the feminist perspective and more conservative women's perspectives, liberal men's perspectives and more, more conservative men's perspectives. No movement on gender can be a balanced, loving movement, unless it represents all four of those perspectives. What we have done to this point in history is take a magnifying glass to women's experience of powerlessness and women's experience of male power. But no one has taken a magnifying glass to the male experience of powerlessness and the male experience of female power. The male experience of walking around at the age of 14 with his testosterone running wild and wanting to have sex with every female who's two thirds of the way attractive or one third of the way attractive in his class and having to hold off from doing so because he knows that if he reaches out and touches her or kisses her, does what he feels like doing, he'll be prosecuted or ashamed. That's just a fraction of the male experience of powerlessness uh, that he feels before women. And that powerlessness is being flaunted before him every day in commercials, and on TV and in every way, and no outlet for the male feelings. We, we condemn men for not expressing their feelings, and we condemn them when they express their feelings. It's a double-edged sword. Yes. It's, it's, it's a, it's a catch-22. So what we're saying is that what you're saying is that a balanced man, a mindful man, needs to learn how to deal with his emotions in a balanced perspective and, and not need women so hard. Yes, and that will happen when some concrete solutions occur, when every first and second grade and third grade has communication skills training built into their curriculum. Like in Denmark. Like they do in Denmark. Uh, but it needs to be more than just educating the children. If the children are educated to be more emotionally fluent and be able to handle criticism without becoming defensive, which is the, the, the crucial ingredient of emotional intelligence. The Achilles heel of all human beings is our inability to handle personal criticism from loved ones. 
or even those that we care about, or even people in, that we care about in kindergarten and first grade. But if the children learn how to do that in first and second and third grade, and then they go to home to parents that do not know how to do that, then they will have disrespect from their parents, which will also undermine the family. And so the training has to occur for both our kids and for us as adults. We, ne we need to have that training in every marriage. It needs to be part. If we want to legislate it or anything, legislate the need to go to communication training before you get married as a condition of marriage. That will allow marriages not to be just legislated to be together, but the, the solution is not legislation, it's communication. And you know, people say, oh, the problem is not the communication, it's, um, it's money, it's children, it's sexuality. The problem is not money, children, and sexuality, it's the way we communicate about money, children, and sexuality.